Hey guys, welcome to Land Hermit Crab Educational Center. My name is Jessica and today we're going to be talking about isopods. Hey guys, so if you're looking to make your enclosure bioactive, um, usually springtails right along with isopods work very well hands in hands. If you don't want to do springtails, we are going to be talking about isopods. That's what I have. I currently have them in an isolation container just so I can breed them. Um, usually it takes not long at all for them to breed. So you want to make sure that you're um, breeding a few generations before you actually add them into your enclosure so you can know for sure that they're going to survive. Now they need um, a few things in order for them to thrive in your enclosure and I'm going to um, speak to you guys a little bit about that. Now isopods, they're pretty much, um, they're crustaceans so they're not considered bugs. Um, they are pretty uh, fascinating little um, things. So I want to show you a little bit about what I give my uh, isopods. Now my isopods already are pretty much um, in the fourth, fifth generation already. So I am about to be adding them into my enclosures. So I wanted to make sure that I was able to breed a few generations before I did that. So there are these isopods they do require pretty much the same thing our hermit crabs do. Each species do require different things, um, but I would suggest um, powdered orange or powdered blue um, for beginners just because they do um, well in our hermit crab enclosures. Now, not all species will survive. Um, whether they're beautiful or not, they're not, um, some require more higher humidity or less humidity um, but powder blue and powder orange um, isopods work very well with our hermit crabs um, isopods you have some might require um, more protein than others but the powder blue and the powdered orange require the same thing as our hermit crabs so um, you want to make sure that you're giving them those things and changing them up, changing it up, just like you do with your hermit crabs, give them different options. So now isopods need calcium, just like our crabs do. And um, limestone, calcium carbonate, cal um, limestone is a great source of calcium and it's very good for them. You can um, find this online on Etsy. Um, there are different packages of food out there for isopods. Now, like I mentioned, you can give them um, uh, food that you give your hermit crabs. I'll explain what I do with that in a second. Now, this is isopod shrooms, isopod um, pumpkinos, which is just isopod powdered pumpkin, um, isopod greens, and then there. This is a, a calcium supplement for isopods is just a variation of different calcium which is pretty much five sources of calcium it has limestone and things like that um, so these are just in a rock form if you can see um, but it's really not necessary if you want to spend that extra money and get the stuff for the isopods you can but if you have hermit crabs then you really don't need to go into um, all those details you can just get um, feed them your hermit crab food. What I do is whatever my hermit crabs don't eat in their food dishes, I just scoop it out into a container and I keep it in the freezer. And I would feed my isopods every two days. Now my colony has um, multiplied, has several generations. So um, they have, they are a lot. So I do have to feed them every two days, just like my hermit crabs. Um, I don't like to put too much because you don't want food to sit there over uh, 24, 48 hours max because it will mold. Springtails as well, if you do add them, they do work hand in hand with that. Um, but you want, you really don't want a mold in your tank. 
um, you want to avoid that. It's not good for you and it's not good for the crabs as well. But um, whatever they don't eat, you can feed to your isopods. So isopods do multiply very fast. Um, when I mean very fast, I mean very fast. It doesn't take them long um, for them to um, multiply. Um, I would say within a month, you are going to see them multiply as long as they have what they need in, in their isolation container, um, what I'm going to be showing you. But um, when they do overrun your tank because they do multiply very fast, the humane way to dispose of them um, is by freezing them. You can create a potato um, trap, which is just get a big potato, what you would use for, as a big potato. You're going to slice that potato in half and you're going to scoop out just the center. So you want to leave the potato whole. You want to just open it up and leave it just cracked open a little bit and scoop out the center, just the center. You're gonna place it onto your substrate. The next day you can, um, pick them up and put them into a container. Um, you can put the whole potato in there or you could just um, you know, remove them and put them into the container and repeat the process if you like. Um, you can use the potato as many times as you need to until you get what you want. And you can freeze them in a container and you can feed them back to your crabs. You know, or you can even um, uh, give them to friends if you like you know um they're 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 amazing crustaceans so you can do that but the hermit crabs will not eat them live so as long as they're alive they won't touch them the the isopods won't even bother the hermit crabs as well but i like i mentioned they will become um quite a bit of a pest if there are too many inside your enclosure they might bother them a little bit if they overrun the tank so when they do get to that point, just do the potato um, trap and you can freeze them um, and then feed them back to your crabs. It's very important that we offer uh, leaf litter to our crabs, just like our crabs, to the isopods as well. South of the ocean has better than leaf litter, which is fantastic. You can feed this and scatter this in, uh, in, um, in their container or when you do add them into your tank, I'll explain what to do later on on that. But you can um, add a uh, leaf litter uh, because of crabs as well on Etsy is amazing. She has bark, she has um, uh, different kinds of leaf litter. Um, BioFX has other stuff as well. I'm going to show you what I got from her. There's all different kinds of, of things you can get for your crabs. You want to make sure that you have plenty of hides for them, uh, for your isopods. You want to make sure that you have lots of hides for them um, just because they do need hides. Um, they do hide and they need, they, need, they need that security just like our crabs do, they need those hides. So it's important that you have bark in there um, and I'll show you now what what they look like inside my container. So now I have them inside this airtight tub container and you can see that I have plenty of hides for them. Um, it's just bark, okay? And they have a lot of foraged items. Here is a lot of the babies. Now here, see they need lots of hides. So don't wanna disturb them. You don't want to, just like our hermit crabs, they're very finicky. Um, they get scared very easily. So you want to make sure that uh, you have a moist side okay when first starting out you want a moist side of moss now this is the side that you're going to spray I usually like to keep a spray bottle and I will moisten this side twice a week you don't want to excessively moisten the substrate 
um, because you will um, start mold. Now, I like to use little shells, flat shells like that for the calcium, okay? And I just throw the leaf litter everywhere, scatter it around. Um, I like to keep some cuddle bone there for some extra um, calcium. But you can see the little babies. This is the second generation. And then you have big, big, big guys. They are beautiful. And they're very gentle. <laughs> they're very skittish, of course. But um, you want to only, you want to mix, your substrate is just going to be, you can just use cocoa fiber. This is what I use and I feel that it's what works best for me. So one side is just going to be moss. This is going to be your moist side. And then the rest of the side is going to be your dry side. So, you know, they require a certain amount of humidity, just like our crabs. So you don't want to over... Um, moisten this substrate so one side only is um should be moist i do spray the leaf the, the leaf litter here and there um i like to add new leaf litter every so often just to um keep them entertained um but it's good for them they are very sweet there are two different shades we did add one powder blue in here so they do have they do breed and create a different species colors but they are pretty cool um so the substrate is just cocoa fiber and the moss on that side so the part with the cocoa fiber you're not moistening um i just do a little quick quick little spray on the leaf litter on top and that's it i do have some live moss here on the side but they they do love it so i like to give them different options <laughs> okay guys so to recap what um you're going to need when you first starting out i always suggest to start with only 10 isopods and you're going to need a container like this i suggest a little tote you're going to be drilling a few holes just on one side. You don't need a lot of holes. Just you want to make sure that you have enough airflow inside these containers for the isopods. Um, nothing too much because you don't want any bugs getting in there or um, anything getting out. So you want to make sure that the holes are high up where the lid is at. And I and then you're going to do the same thing on one other side okay when you are adding your leaf litter you can add your hides you don't want to add anything that's going to um, reach the top of your container no branches that are going to be touching the ledge because they will escape okay they do climb so you don't want to add anything that has um, height in it you want to keep everything at um, at a level okay guys so to recap what um, you're going to need when you first starting out I always suggest to start with only 10 isopods and you're going to need a container like this I suggest a little tote you're going to be drilling a few holes just on one side you don't need a lot of holes just you want to make sure that you have enough airflow inside these containers for the isopods um, nothing too much because you don't want any bugs getting in there or um, anything getting out so you want to make sure that the holes are high up where the lid is at and i and then you're going to do the same thing on one other side okay when you are adding your leaf litter you can add your hides you don't want to add anything that's going to um reach the top of your container no branches that are going to be touching the ledge because they will escape okay they do climb so you don't want to add anything that has um height in it you want to keep everything at um at a level These guys are all watching me. 